I've given you a taste of how important teaching procedures is because that's basically the essence of good classroom management. How did I get this? That it gives from reading out of a book? No, I got it from years of classroom teaching. These are things that I picked up and I learned in the classroom. I've taught primary, upper elementary, and every grade 7 through 12 in a variety of different subject areas. They come from my own personal experiences. I know so many people, and you may know also, who write books on classroom management, who oftentimes have not spent much time in the classroom, have a, a psychology major, and really have had little personal experience in doing what I'm sharing with you. People say, Marvie, are you a psychologist? And my answer is no. Chances are, if I would be a psychologist, I would never have developed the system that I am now sharing with you. It comes from my personal experience of how do you deal with kids, do all kinds of things. It's not something that yeah, I just pulled out of the air. It's something I practice. And this is the reason why people from around the world, from Nepal and the Himalayas to New Zealand and the South, are using this approach because it is simple, it works, and it's stress-reducing. And in the process, you improve your relationships and you become so much more effective. One thing you must know is that I love teaching and this is the reason why I returned to the classroom after 24 years of school administration, staff development, school counseling. I wanted to spend the last few years doing what I love most. And I had a very interesting experience, really, too, that most people do not have. The first one came from my business experience. I have a master's in business administration and throughout my years in business I would talk to people and got into the conversation if they had a chance to live their lives, their professional lives over again, would they choose the exact same thing? The vast majority said no. What usually happens is you learn a skill or uh, a, a trade, a profession, and that's where you spend your life. And I reflected the very first year I was teaching, pardon me, the, yes, the first year I was teaching, I was the first year I was married. And I remember how much I enjoyed myself and how really sorrowful it was when I left the class and I was going to go to teach at the university level and at the same time work on a master's in business administration, which I did. So coming back to talking about with so many people, I said to myself, I reflected, which I do often, if I'm fortunate enough to know what I enjoy doing in life, I'd be a fool not to take advantage of it. I can only wear one suit of clothes at a time, drive one car at a time. So as a result, I called my old principal and I said, I want to come back into the profession. So I've had a taste of being out of the profession and then coming back in. So I'm probably more grateful than, than, than many people are. The second experience I had, which so many people do not have, is that when I came back, I was aware of outside influences. And what happened was, it's like a frog. It's a biology 101. You are familiar with the experiment. You take a pot of water, or you take a pot, put water in it, and then you put the frog in, and you have boiled frog. But if you boil the water first and then put the frog in, the frog is going to jump off because it's a cold, cold-blooded reptile. That's what happened to me. So often we're in a situation, and we were there, and things change, but we don't change. In my situation, I saw how many things we were doing that are counterproductive and we don't even realize it. It's because I had the experience of being out of the classroom then coming back into the classroom and seeing the difference. I'll give you a simple example. The vast majority of teachers rely on rules. You take a look at any educational book and they talk about rules. The fact of the matter is that rules do not create desire. 
Basically, they're saying you follow the rule or else. Is that the kind of relationship you want to have with kids? Did you come into the teaching profession to become a cop? I don't think so. At least I didn't. So I looked at my rules. I said, wait a minute. Rules are either procedures, in which case I'll teach them, or they're expectations. And I'll give you my expectations when we talk about the discipline part, the third part of the teaching without stress model, which is the raised responsibility system. So, I am sharing this with you, not from a university professor or a psychology major, from actual experience. And that's the why people who use this program say, Marv, you've saved my life. If you implement all phases of the Discipline Without Stress teaching model, you will realize these benefits. Although the resource guide is not necessary to have for the seminar, you should know that I will periodically refer to it, as I do when I am presenting a live seminar. When I present to a school, one of the benefits is that the school receives a copy of the 100-page resource guide for distribution. The guide has a number of forms that I will explain, but are not conducive to showing on a screen. If you are interested in having and referring to the many suggestions in the resource guide, please link to the store on the blue menu bar at marvinmarshall.com. You will find that the ebook is downloadable and printer friendly.